Good evening, friends, fiends, and night owl supremes. Welcome to A Bit Late. I hope your evening is going well or your day is going swimmingly. Tonight, we have an interesting story. The story of the Princess Golden Hair. It starts off standardly. You know, we get some tasks and then it just gets weird, like really quickly at the end. All of a sudden, I don't want to spoil it, but it gets sort of weird. So, get comfy, get cozy, summon your animal familiars, gather a blanket for it around yourself, get your coffee, your tea, everything you need to get settled and comfy for tonight's story. Also, turn on the fairy lights, light some candles, let's do this. Without further ado, the fairy tale of Princess Golden Hair. There was once a king's daughter who was the most beautiful thing She's a person in the world. And as her hair was fair and reached to her feet, she was called the Princess Golden Hair. A handsome young king in the neighborhood. <laughs> a king in the neighborhood, all right. Although he had never seen this princess, fell so deeply in love with her from what he had heard that he could neither eat nor sleep. <laughs> Does he have a thing for hair, I wonder? So an ambassador was sent with a magnificent chariot, more than a hundred horses, and fifty pages to bring the princess to the king, and great preparations were made for her reception. That's a lot of horses and pages. <sighs> a lot, a lot. But whether the princess Golden Hair was in an ill humor when the ambassador arrived at her court, or whatever was the reason, Certain it is that she sent a messenger to the young king, thanking him, but saying that she did not wish to marry. When the king heard of her refusal, he wept like a child. Oh, she probably wants to see him first, at least. But it's her call, I guess. Ultimately, right? Now, at his court, there was a young man called Abnanth. He was as beautiful as the sun, and a more finely made fellow than any in the kingdom, Oh, ho, ho, ho. so he's very pretty. Everybody loved him except a few envious people who were angry because the king favored and confided in him. And in the presence of these, one day, Avanat incautiously remarked, If the king had sent me to fetch the princess golden hair, I am certain she would have come. <laughs> oh, ego much? I mean, I guess. And these words were repeated to the king in such a manner that they made him very angry. And he ordered Amanon to be shut up in a high tower to die of hunger. That's usually what happens to the pretty princesses shut up in a high tower, alone forever. My, how the tables have turned. Or the towers have risen? I don't know what the fairy tale version of that is. We'll figure it out though, right? In this sad plight, Amanon exclaimed one day, how have I offended his majesty? He has no more faithful subject than I. The king, who happened to be passing by the tower, as you do, heard this. He called for Avanon to be brought forth, who, throwing himself on his knees, begged to know in what way he had offended his royal master. You mocked me, said the king. You said that you would have succeeded with the princess golden hair where I have failed. It is true, sir, replied Avenant. I did say so, for I would have represented your noble qualities in such a way that she could not help being persuaded. Oh, I'm sure it would have nothing to do with your pretty face, right? The king was convinced of the young man's sincerity, really. And with a letter of introduction, Avenant set out for the court of the golden-haired beauty, Riding alone, according to his wish, and thinking as he went how he could best woo the princess for his beloved master. So he is genuine then, hmm. One day, alighting from his horse to write down some suitable words that had come into his mind, taking notes on the road, he saw a golden carp, who, leaping out from the water to catch flies, had thrown herself upon the riverbank and was now nearly dead. Lucky chance that, that he saw her like that, and knows it's a she at a distance. I don't know anything about carp, except for magic carps evolve into Gyaradoses. So I will defer to Avenant's expertise here, or the storytellers. Avenant pitied the poor thing and put her carefully back into the water. Recovering directly, the carp dived to the bottom, but returning to the edge of the river, said, Avenant, I thank you. You have saved my life. I will repay you. Then she swam off, leaving the young man in great astonishment. A talking carp. 
It is a magic carp. <laughs> Get it? Magic carp? Anyway, I'm sorry. Back to the story, right? Another day as Avenant journeyed, he noticed a raven who was pursued by an eagle. How long is this journey? I thought she was in the neighborhood. Anyway, what right has that eagle to persecute that raven, thought Avenant. Food? Dinner? And he drew his bow and shot the fierce bird. The raven perched on a bough and cried, Avenant, you have saved my life. I will not be ungrateful. I will repay you. Not long after this, Avenant found an owl caught in a snare. He cut the strings and freed the trembling captive. Avenant, said the owl, you have saved my life. I will repay you. This is kind of the opposite of the story of the white snake in which the protagonist is really awful to some animals and then some he pities. This guy just takes pity on all of them. Well, no, that's not true. He didn't take pity on the pursuant of the raven now, did he? Hmm. Selective helpful, I guess. Anyway, that's another cool story, the white snake. These three adventures were the most important that befell Avenant's, and he went on his way. Shortly before he arrived at his destination, purchasing a beautiful little dog named Cabriel. When Avenant reached the palace of the Princess Goldenhair, he saw the princess seated upon her throne. She looked so lovely that at first all his fine speeches forsook him and he could not utter a word. However, taking courage, he addressed her in an exquisitely chosen language, begging her to become the king's bride. To this the princess replied most graciously, saying that his petition moved her more than any of the others could do. I'm sure it had something to do with 100 horses. But no, she added, as I was walking by the river a month ago, as I took off my glove, a ring that I value greatly fell into the water, and I have vowed that I will not heed any marriage proposal except from the ambassador who brings me back my ring. <sighs> this is almost exactly going to be like the white snake, I will tell you that right now. Maybe. We'll see. I say this with certainty, but then I'm like, maybe not, it started off completely differently, but this task? This task we know, dear friends and fiends. I wonder who's going to help him with it. Sad at heart, Avenant left the palace, but his little dog, Cabriel, said, My dear master, do not despair. You are too good to be unhappy. Early tomorrow morning, let us go to the riverside. Avenant patted him, but did not answer, and, still sad, fell asleep. As soon as it was day, Cabriel awoke him, saying, Dress yourself, my master, and come out. They wandered down the river, and there Avenant heard a voice calling him, and what should he see but the golden carp with the princess's ring in her mouth? Wow, what luck. Take it, dear Avenant, said she. I promised to repay you for saving my life, and now I can fulfill my promise. Thanking her a thousand times, Avenant, going at once to the palace, said, Princess, your command is fulfilled. May it please you to receive the king, my master, as your husband. The princess thought she must be dreaming when she saw the ring, but she set Avna another task. <laughs> of course she did. Does she really want to get married? I don't think so. Not far from here, there is a prince named Galifron, she said. He wishes to marry me and threatens to ravish my kingdom if I refuse. But how can I accept him? He is a giant, taller than my highest tower. He eats man as a monkey would eat a chestnut. And when he speaks, his voice is so loud that it deafens all those who hear him. He will not take my refusal, but kills my subjects. You must fight and bring me his head. I feel like this is a way more pressing matter than getting back the golden ring. <laughs> she probably should have left with this. And maybe not have set the pretty boy on this task? I don't know, maybe the pages and the horses or her own army is more appropriate here? <laughs> oh my gosh. All we know about Avenant is he is prettier than the sun. That's it. That's all we know. Also, he's a smooth talker. So, he'll probably be sly in how he kills this giant, but oh my god. I feel like, oh no, my ring, versus oh no, my subjects are getting squished into jelly under something's feet. There's a big difference there. <laughs> Princess Goldenhair, come on. Anyway. Well, madame, replied Avenant, I will fight Galifron. I expect I shall be killed, but I shall die a brave man. And taking Gabriel, Avenant set out for Galifron's country, asking news of the giant as he went along, and the more he heard, the more he feared him. Oh great. But Gabriel reassured him. 
My dear master, said the little dog, while you are fighting him, I will bite his legs, and then he will stoop to chase me, and then you will kill him. <laughs> oh, I kind of like that little dog. Don't worry, here's the plan. I'm going to nip at his heels, okay? Cool, let's go. Avanad admired the bravery of the little dog, but he knew his help would not be sufficient. Mm, we'll see. Presently, they perceived how the roads were covered with the bones of the men that Galifron had eaten, and soon they saw the giant coming towards them through a wood. His head was higher than the highest trees, and he sang in a terrific voice, Where are the children so small, so small? With my teeth I will crush them all. Oh, so many I feed, feed, feed. The whole world can't supply my need. Using the same tune, Avenant began to sing, Look down here, Zavenant, beneath, beneath. He will draw from your head the teeth, the teeth. Although he is not very big, tis true. He is able to fight with such as you. The giant put himself into a terrible passion and would have killed Avenant with only one blow. Only a raven above flew at his head and pecked him straight in the eye so violently that he was blinded. Good job, raven friend. He began striking out on all sides, but Avanon avoided his blows, and with his sword pierced him so many times that at last he fell to the ground. Then Avanon cut off his head, and the raven, who had perched on a tree, said, I have not forgotten how you rescued me from the eagle. I promise to repay you. I think I have done so today. Yes, I do too, raven. Good job. Good job. But what about the little dog? He was supposed to be nipping at some heels here. Hmm. I owe everything to you, Mr. Raven, responded Avanon, as, holding Galfron's head, he rode off. <laughs> How does he carry that? Ugh, I just, I picture this, as, it's not a very comfortable or neat and clean thing to carry. Who knows how far and long. Great. And it's probably really unwieldy and cumbersome, too, because it's probably as big as he is. Oh, sorry, imagination? Gotta love it. Back to the story. Let's, we better go back to the story. <laughs> ah. When he entered the town, crowds followed him, crying, Here is the brave Avanand who has slain the monster. Avanand advanced to the princess and said, Madam, your enemy is dead. I hope you will no more refuse the king, my master. But of course she will, right? It's not a fairy tale without threes. Although it is so, answered the princess, I shall refuse him unless you bring me some water from the Grotto of Darkness. At the entrance there are two dragons, with fire in their eyes and mouths. Inside the grotto there is a deep pit into which you must descend. It is full of toads, oh no, scorpions and serpents. At the bottom of this pit there is a little cave where flows the fountain of beauty and health. Positively, I must possess this water. All who wash in it, if they are beautiful, continue so always. <laughs> oh, vanity. If they are ugly, they become beautiful. If they are young, they will remain young. If they are old, they regain their youth. So if you're old and you bathe, you become young. But if you're then young from being old and you bathe again, are you always young? So like a double bath will do the trick to cement you in youth and beauty forever? Fairy tale questions. Anyway, she's not done talking. You cannot wonder, Avenant, that I will not leave my kingdom without taking it with me. Wait, it's not something you do once and done? You have to always use it? Mm. I'm confused. More fairy tale questions. Maybe we'll get answers. Maybe. So once more, Avenant and Cabriel set out. They journeyed on until they came to a rock, black as ink, from which smoke was issuing. And a moment later, there appeared one of the dragons belching forth fire from his eyes and mouth. He was a frightful-looking creature with a green and yellow body, and his tail was so long that it went into a hundred curves. Avanon saw all this, but resolved to die. Oh, nobody. He drew his sword, and carrying the flask the princess had given to him to hold the water, he said to Cabriel, my days are ended. I can never obtain the water the dragons are guarding. When I am dead, fill this flask with my blood and carry it to the princess. That's not what she asked for. That's gruesome. That she may know what it has cost me. Then go to the king, my master, and tell him of my misfortune. <laughs> oh, so grim and melodramatic, Abenant. Also, how is the dog going to do that, really? 
He didn't even bite the heels of the ogre or the giant. Didn't even do what he said he was going to do. Anyway. Mm. As he was speaking, a voice called, Avenant, Avenant. And looking around, he saw an owl. You saved my life from the fowlers, said the owl. I promise to repay you. The time has now come. Give me your flask, I will bring you the water of beauty. And carrying the flask, the owl entered the grotto, unhindered, returning in less than a quarter of an hour with it full to the brim. <laughs> that was easy. Probably had some dinner too with the toads and snakes and stuff in the well. Avenant thanked the owl heartily and joyously started for the town, where he presented the flask to the princess, who immediately gave orders to prepare for her departure. So she didn't use the water? She's saving it? She's giving it to the king so he can be handsome? She doesn't know what he looks like. Hmm, interesting. But as she considered Avenant altogether charming, before she set out, she several times said to him, If you wish, we need not go, for I will make you king of my country. But Avenant made reply, I would not displease my master for all the kingdoms of earth, although your beauty I consider greater than that of the sun, just like his own. Oh. Thus they arrived at the king's capital, and the wedding took place amid great rejoicings. But Princess Goldenhair, who loved Avenant from the depths of her heart, was not happy unless she could see him, and was forever singing his praises. Why didn't she just refuse the king then? Just not marry him if she's going to be in this much turmoil. Oh no, forlorn love. So she's always singing Avenant's praises. I should not have come had it not been for Avenant, she told the king. You ought to be very much obliged to him. I mean, he saved my kingdom from being turned into jelly. He gave me this magical water and, you know, super big deal, he got back my ring. <laughs> Priorities is still baffling. And we're not getting any answers because we're almost done with the tale. So she's, again, she's singing his praises and the envious courtiers counseled the king. And Avenant was cast once more into the tower chained hand and foot. When Princess Goldenhair heard of this imprisonment, she fell on her knees before the king and begged for Avenant's release. But he would not heed her, so that she became saddened and would speak no more. Then the king thought, maybe I am not handsome enough to please her. So he determined to wash his face in the water of beauty. <sighs> oh, this story... Now it happened that a chambermaid had broken the flask containing this wonderful water, of course she did, so that it was all spilled. Without saying anything to anyone, she had replaced it by a similar flask taken from the king's apartment. But the liquid in this flask was really that which was used when the princes or great lords were condemned to death, for instead of being beheaded, their faces were washed with this water and they fell asleep and did not wake again. <laughs> He just has this flask out in his bedroom, this dangerous sleeping death water, in the room, accessible to the maid, on a whim. Good lord. Okay, let's see where this goes. Although you probably know. And so the king, using this water one evening, thinking it to be the water of beauty and hoping and expecting to be made more handsome, went to sleep and awoke no more. Upon hearing what had occurred, Gabriel went at once and told Avenant to ask him to go to the Princess Goldenhair and beseech her to remember the poor prisoner. Of course she is, she's like obsessed with him. When the princess received this message, she went straight to the tower and with her own hands struck off the chains that bound Avenant's. And placing a crown of gold upon his head and a royal mantle upon his shoulders said, Come, dear Avenant, I will make you king and take you for my husband. Then there was a grand wedding, and the Princess Goldenhair and Avenant with Gabriel lived long, all of them happy and contented. The end. Dear friends and fiends, I hope you enjoyed this story. A lot happened that didn't need to happen. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm just baffled about the kingdom being smashed, and that's not priority number one. And then I do kind of feel bad for the king that just wanted to, you know, impress his wife and use the face wash that was death wash. And he didn't need to die if she had just been like, no, I'd rather marry you, so I'm not going to go marry your king. I mean, there's nothing binding her to go see the king after he fulfilled all these tasks. I mean, right? Because if there was, she would have just been married to the king after the ring was found, but she kept adding things to the list. 
she could have kept doing that, but I mean, that'd be really bad for have not. Yeah, so this one's sort of a happily ever after, sort of a waste too. I, I don't like the king that passed, but I don't think he should have. Oh, I'm getting charged from this one. I have thoughts and feelings. But let me know what you think in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope your day is a little better or your evening's a little brighter. No, your day would be brighter and your evening might be better. Now that the story has come to an end, it's not bright at night, of course. But I hope you're having a wonderful time of things and I'll see you soon in the next video. But now off to sleep and dream what you will or stay a while and enjoy another tale. Whichever you choose, I'll speak to you again. And until then, stay spooky, my friends. Good night.